quite personally am intensely interested in it and just delighted to have been given the opportunity to participate. <clears throat> My name is Walter Shira, Walter M. Shira, Jr. I originally came from Ordell, New Jersey. I think in my answer to uh, what is my motivation, I think it's typical of most of us in this country. We're interested in new things. Aviation has been a new thing. Uh, now it's a 50-year-old thing. I might add that talking to my mother just recently, asking her if she had any anxieties about this, I had an answer. My father was one of the very early aviators. His parents faced the same problem. So I feel this is an expansion in uh, another dimension, much as aviation was an expansion off the surface of the Earth. I'm Virgil I. Grissom from Mitchell, Indiana. Oh, hmm. my How career... How old are you, Mitchell? 33. I didn't say. <laughs> uh, my career has been uh, serving a nation, serving a country, and uh, here's another opportunity where they need my talents, and I'm most grateful for an opportunity to uh, serve in this capacity. I'm John Glenn. I'm the lonesome Marine on this outfit, and I'm uh, 37. Uh, in answer to this same question a few days ago from someone else, uh, I jokingly, uh, of course, said that uh, I got on this project because it'd probably be the nearest to heaven I'd ever get, and I wanted to make the most of it. But uh, my feelings are that this whole project with regard to, to space sort of stands with us now as, as if you want to look at it one way, like the Wright brothers stood at Kitty Hawk about 50 years ago. The question is, uh, what about their age? Are men over 30 more stable, uh, more reliable, or what? Uh, Captain Barr, perhaps you might like to answer that one. In addition, of course, to the medical qualifications, there were certain other qualifications. For example, uh, these men had to have a technical background in a subject related to this uh, new specialty. The question is, in the event that for any reason one of these gentlemen becomes eliminated from the program, uh, will he be replaced? Uh, Bob? Uh, not necessarily, and as I understand it, uh, we don't think that it will be necessary. So if you got more work to do it right better? The question is, do we have more work to do at uh, Wright-Patterson, or will all the work be done at Langley? If I might give the answer to that one, yes, indeed, we will be going back to Wright-Patterson. We will be going to Johnsville, PA, where the Navy has a centrifuge. Uh, we may be going to a number of other service installations or medical facilities around the country. This is in truth and in, in every possible way of saying it, a national program in which every resource of the nation uh, in the areas required is being called upon. Yes, sir. Well, all their wives are going along with them now, they say. They can call their wives. First reactions when they said they were doing a volunteer. The question is, or the observation, uh, take your choice, uh, while the wives of these seven men at the present time are all uh, giving them support to the project. Uh, what about as the, as the thing gets closer to the first orbital flight? No, first and would flight. and would the and would the gentlemen like to recall, if they can, their wise first reaction to a hazardous undertaking? They decided they wanted to volunteer. When they decided they wanted to volunteer for this project. Let's start in the middle with Brother Grissom. He looks fat and happy at this point. Let him start with Well, uh, there was never any question in my mind about volunteering. Uh, it was just, uh, could I uh, get in on the program? So when I said something to my wife, uh, what she thought about my volunteering, she says, well, uh, do you even have to ask? This is all I want to. <laughs> Well, to go way back when the first information of this program came out, when every one of us, you as well as us sitting right here, were ignorant about the whole thing, I can recall my own reaction, what a bunch of idiots. And my wife felt the same way. Now, this takes a little education. 
I had to be educated too. <clears throat> I think that's what we're trying to do to you today, is to educate you to the fact that we're not playing games, this is serious business. And you can't just face up to this thing and say, we're going to, as Mr. Donlan said, put a million dollars in a can and fire it into space. It's nothing like that at all. You don't make a program out of something as crude as that. Uh, this is a, a professional program. We're trying to do something with it. And most people who have asked me, uh, why are you in this idiotic program? I immediately say, if you'll take a little bit of time to think about it, to study it, you realize that this is something that we're very serious about. In answer to the question about my wife's original reaction, uh, I think I believe, I believe I indicated earlier she was in complete support of my professional decision. She is now and has been at all times. Uh, personally, my wife uh, isn't too concerned about what I do professionally. I think she's more concerned about whether uh, she can find a babysitter and whether uh, there's a commissary nearby to buy groceries and this sort of thing. And uh, whether I'm in this program or uh, running a filling station wouldn't concern her too much as long as we had uh, everything else we needed. Uh, my wife's enthusiasm has matched mine throughout uh, the program. As a matter of fact, when I was uh, notified that I was to be uh, considered during the second and third phases of the competitive program, I was at sea at this uh, time, and so my wife called Washington and volunteered for me. <laughs> Good show. <laughs> What can I what can I say after that one? <laughs> that's literally out now, that's the, the best of the bunch. <laughs> I've never had any problem so far as my wife going along with my career. My wife is also a pilot and is quite sympathetic to uh, my desires on flying and particularly to this program. Quite enthusiastic. My wife made a remark the other day, I've been out of this world for a long time, I might as well go on out there. <laughs> so, uh, I think all the wives, or at least my wife, uh, when they first hear of something like this, they have reservations about it because they don't know anything about it. It's like all of us. We first hear of something like this, you're, you're very interested, but you're, uh, you sure want to find out a lot more about it before you're willing to, to uh, place your neck way out there. And uh, I think that's the way all of us have been. I think probably uh, what would best describe my wife's reaction has been that as she has learned more about the program, as I have gone through subsequent phases of it, and as she has learned more about it along with me, that she has become as enthusiastic about it as I am. Uh, I don't remember any deathless prose, though, as her initial reaction on this when, when we first started talking about it. It was one of those things that you just come home and start talking about like anything else. The question is, uh, will the second step after Project Mercury involve one, more than one man? And, and the answer is we don't know yet, but for sure the second or third or fourth step will involve more than one man. I have a question about physical requirements. Is the most important thing the stamina to withstand an immediate shock or the uh, endurance to withstand a long, grueling strain? The question is about uh, physical uh, requirements. Is it stamina to to endure a long, grueling strain, or is it stamina to endure a shock? And uh, uh, Captain Barr, uh, General Flakinger, and Dr. Loveless, you can flip coins on that one. Well, I, uh, I feel that uh, the problem of, will be one of multiple stresses, and I think Captain Barr and General Flakinger feel the same way. And uh, the way the program is set up, I feel that every man here can uh, withstand the stresses to which they will be subjected. Really, if I can give you this picture, uh, we start out with a, as you already know, with the extremely detailed uh, clinical examination, uh, perhaps the most exhaustive that has ever been devised. Uh, then we go from that to, as I say, uh, this battery of what we call simulated space stresses. Uh, this is the full spectrum of them. Isolation, confinement, the dynamic forces as a part of the vehicular 
expenditure of any energy to get into orbit and to the destruction of that energy to get back into land. Now, it just so turns out that uh, when you pick people with, uh, you might say, uh, a 